Hello, I'm CJ Windish, and welcome to Tinker and Build. Today we're going to be making a counter for a coil winding machine. When you do stuff with electricity and magnetism, inevitably, you end up needing to wind coils to make electromagnets, like those in electric motors. It gets tedious really quickly to do this by hand. So as a first step toward a coil winding machine, we're going to build a counter that keeps track of how many coils you've made. If you search on YouTube for a coil winding counter, you'll inevitably find the calculator hack project. Originally, I wasn't going to do a video about this because there are so many videos on YouTube. However, I quickly realized the limitations of the calculator hack once I tried it. So here's my hacked calculator turned winding counter. It was actually pretty simple to make, link in the description. But as you can see, it doesn't work well with fast winding machines like my drill. The drill just has too many RPMs for it to keep up. So this won't work if I plan to automate the coil winding process. To understand why the calculator hack is failing, let me explain how the counter works. Essentially, what we've done is hijack the calculator's equals button and connect it to a magnetic read switch. This little guy sends a pulse every time a magnet goes by it. The calculator is set up to add plus one to the total every time equals is pressed. The problem, I think, is that the calculator has debouncing circuitry that limits how fast it can handle pulses. Button or switch bouncing is a phenomenon that happens when you have a button contact. Explanation links in the description. So, to solve this problem, we've decided to build a counter from scratch with an Arduino and some seven segment displays. We'll use the same idea as the calculator project, magnet triggering a read switch, but we'll replace the calculator microprocessor with some Arduino code and make our own display. Here's the circuit. Since I eventually plan on building some hefty electromagnets, I want the counter to be able to handle thousands of coils. So I've bought four seven segment displays since they're fairly simple to work with. The problem is that the four segment displays have 28 relevant inputs, and the Arduino Uno that I have only has 14 outputs. We can reduce the outputs needed by using BCD converters. The NTE7447 chip takes in a BCD signal and translates that to lighting up the proper segments of a seven segment display. If you don't know what BCD is, check out links in the description. BCD to cover nine digits takes four output lines. So hooking up a 7447 for each counter digit, we've cut our requirements from 28 to 16 pins. 16 is still more than the Arduino Uno can handle, so we have to go a step further. While I could get some kind of shield to get more outputs or upgrade to a bigger Arduino, I want to use the one I have, so we'll take a different tact. The idea is to output one digit at a time on a common bus, then enable one chip at a time really rapidly so your eye will only see four digits at once even though they are really cycling just quite fast. This takes us from 16 outputs needed to four for the common BCD bus and four for the digits chip enables. It actually turns out there are a couple other inputs on the 7447, so we'll include them on the bus for a bus size of seven for a total of 11 inputs used, which is below the 14 outputs we have to work with on the Uno. If you're gonna build this project at home, here are the components. Four seven segment displays, four NTE7447 chips, a read switch, one Arduino Uno, 28, 330K resistors, a bunch of wires, a breadboard, and some wire cutters. I just bought all of this stuff at my local Fry's, but it can easily be found online. Be careful when you buy the BCD chips in the seven segments. They have to match up. I initially bought these seven segments with a common cathode design. However, the 7447 chip is designed as an active low sinking circuit, so it's meant for common anode displays. Apparently you can get chips that are active high sourcing, but I read on one site that those were discontinued. So get the 7447 and common anode seven segment displays. They're called NTE3078s. Also the parts are linked in the description. Since this is a fairly complex circuit and a decent amount of code, you should test it as you build it and not try to test it all at once at the end. Also, be sure to test your components. I either got some bad seven segment displays or blew out some of the LEDs during debugging which caused me lots of confusion while testing the circuit. So it's a good idea to make sure that your seven segments work as the data sheet says. Remember, these are syncing chips, so each of the lights light up when the seven segment pin is connected to ground. Test this by supplying one of the common anodes with a five volt from the Arduino and connecting each pin to ground to make sure that the corresponding segments light up. Next, you wanna test your read switch. 
If it's not working, you'll be lost when the counter doesn't work. It's simple to test. Hook up one end to the Arduino's 5 volts and the other to a digital input. Write some code to turn on the built-in LED if the read switch is producing a high signal. Running a magnet back and forth by the switch should light up the LED. Next you want to test the 7447. This is a little hard to do without the context of a complete circuit for one digit. It's not impossible, but it's simpler to hook up one 7 segment and have code count from blank, then to zero, then all the way up to nine to make sure the chip outputs the right outputs. First, let's write some code. Here's the boilerplate set up for pinouts for our circuit. These are the BCD bus and chip enables. For testing, we're going to blank the display, then count from zero to nine to see each digit. A 200 millisecond delay will make it count slow enough to see if each digit is working correctly. Let's throw our display digit code in a method for reusability. A quick look at the 7447 spec and we can match the proper outputs for each segment. Now let's hook up the circuit. Be sure to match the Arduino's outputs we've defined with the inputs to the 7447. It's an easy bug to introduce so check it twice. Then, checking the 7447 and 3078 datasheets, sync the 7447 outputs through a resistor so as not to put too much current through the LEDs and hook that up to the corresponding inputs on the 7 segment display. Ohm's law in the 7 segment datasheet says we need approximately a 330k resistor. That's the one that I have that's closest to the value, so that's close enough. Now compile and upload the code to the Arduino, and it works! This might take you a few tries to get right. I had quite a time debugging between software and hardware before it worked, so be prepared. Hooking up 11 Arduino outputs to 4 7447 chips and 4 7 segment displays takes over 50 wires. This quickly becomes a mess. This project really needs a custom PCB, but that's a project for another time. So to tame the mess, I recommend planning your connections and measuring them so you can cut the wires to the right size. Having random lengths of wires sticking up everywhere is a nightmare to debug, so wiring will be easier to troubleshoot if you do it cleanly. Wow, that was a lot of wiring. Now let's change our test code to counter code. We want to start at zero when the Arduino is reset and then increment at each read switch pulse. Define the read input. Now listen for it. And now increment whenever we see a pulse. Okay, time to test this baby out. Compile it and upload. Now the real test. Let's test if it can keep up with the drill. And there you have it, a working counter for coil winding. In conclusion, this was a pretty good project to do. A little bit of software, a little bit of hardware, and some good I.O. The wiring job is certainly not for the faint at heart, but it's a good intermediate project to do for testing your Arduino skills. And hopefully this will be useful when we get to making some electromagnets. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more Maker videos like this one. Until next time, I'm CJ Windish and this has been Tinker and Build.